Now I'm going to show you a move into more animal. Now what we see here is this is the secretion of insulin. And what you can see when we look at beef, eggs, yogurt, um, you see that there's a, a, a greater secretion of insulin than from carbohydrate. You see the red dots go, are higher in them. And that's the significant point I want to make. in the story. So what you're getting is animal protein and fat increases insulin secretion and further increases insulin resistance. That's the, that's the story. And here we have the American Diabetic Association on their front page. What are they promoting? It's like, what? I looked at that and I said, what? Because they're still in the theory that animal protein is good for you. Okay. So now we're going to look more closely how meat consumption actually increases your rate of diabetes. And, and, and it's, it's surprising. As I compile all this data, putting it together, it's like, wow. There are a lot of ways this happens. Good reason to be vegan. Well, the best study is a study of about 1.25 million people, 1.25 million people, where they showed that uh, eating meat, was international study, 12 different studies, increases uh, uh, rate of diabetes by 35 to 50 percent. Actually, what they showed is for vegans, you have 35 to 50 percent less diabetes. Same thing, just another way of talking about it. And I think that's a pretty important statement. Doesn't mean you're going to be diabetes free if you're vegan, but you're going to increase it by 35 to 50%. Now some data is like two to four times greater, but so a quarter pound of beef will raise your uh, insulin uh, as much as a quarter pound of white sugar. That's interesting. Cheeseburger makes it a little worse, okay. Oh, equal to almost two cups of pasta. So I am saying something important. Meat, protein, and fat does disrupt your insulin function and is associated indirectly with increased rates of diabetes. That's the key. So I'm going to break it down into fat and the protein because it, it's just a little easier to talk about it, okay? So, I'll summarize it and I'll go through it. So the key is, animal fat does a variety of things. First, it blocks intracellular insulin signaling as well as extracellular insulin signaling. So it confuses the system. It blocks the receptor sites, okay, uh, uh, of the cells. It blocks them from getting to the cells, okay. Uh, uh, to the cell wall from inside and it blocks their function. So the cells can't actually receive the insulin so it's associated with increasing insulin resistance. Okay, and that takes us to a pretty significant downward spiral. I'm kind of trying to explain it because it makes it easier. So the muscle cells or the liver or the brain but let's just talk muscle cells for the moment because that's where the research was done. They get insulin resistance from the fat. So what happens next? And the pancreas then says, well, I got to produce more insulin. So it starts to go into overwork. So it raises the insulin, normal from 2 to 10. Above 10, it's considered insulin resistant. So it works harder, but in the meantime, the muscle cells have an excess of fat and they start to move it to the liver. And the liver is like, ugh, this is a problem. And the liver finally, when it gets filled with fat, VLDL produces substance that then transfers the fat to the beta cells of the pancreas. When it hits the beta cells of the pancreas, it starts to poison the beta cells of the pancreas. In terms of fish fat, we know that two helpings of fish a week will actually decrease beta cell function, which means it's killing beta cells. 
animal fat in general kills beta cells. So in this circular thing, we see we got, we got some definite problems. So animal fat makes our muscle cells insulin resistant, and then we're into more problem. And, uh, and it seems to be more true with animal fat. Let's say, I, I can't put a number on it, but it's like 90, 95% animal fat's the, the problem, okay? Uh, so this thing starts with insulin resistance and starts that cycle that I just described that eventually poisons the beta cells and we start to get over type 2 diabetes. That's what we're talking about. Okay, uh, and the liver itself gets into insulin resistance and has a trouble, and then as I mentioned uh, 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 about the VLDL, that gets secreted from the liver, and it sends the fat to the pancreas, and then that's the problem. So, part of type 2 diabetes is an increased amount of animal fat within the cells, the muscles, the liver, and literally the pancreas. And uh, it creates a problem. Okay. Uh, and that's the whole sequence that you need to understand. That's why obesity adds to it because the more fat, well, fat does make you fat, but the more, the fatter we get, the more fat we have in the system to cause these kind of problems. Now, I note that when the body is trying to deal with the insulin resistance, it's secreting more insulin. And it turns out that insulin is an anabolic hormone. Okay, that's a problem. What does that mean? Is that it actually can create cancer in, in five or six different organ systems. Cancer of the breast, cancer of the prostate, cancer of the colon, cancer of the colorectal areas, cancer of the endometrium, cancer of the pancreas also cancer of the ovaries. So what happens is that um, the insulin overproduces in those areas and those areas have too much growth hormone, so to speak, and you're getting cancer. So uh, high insulin is associated with those particular areas of cancer. That's the, the point I'm making. So we have to be aware of that as well. So. There are different studies, 17,000, but big studies, okay? 17,000 people, moderate meat, filed for 12 years. That's a good study, okay? 8% increase for every 50 grams. But basically, trend, eat meat, increase diabetes, type 2 diabetes. That's the trend.